Again, thank you uh, to um, whoever is helping out in the video department today. It's Tomothy the guy. <laughs> thank you so much for your um, for your unparalleled assistance. Also at AllenCockShow.com is the brand new Pound Take podcast, which is called Manifest Your Inner Maverick. I'm curious. Is that a Top Gun reference, or are you just... Uh, no, the guy that I did the podcast with, his name is Maverick. Is it Maverick Carter? No. Oh. His name's Maverick Peters. But, um, <clears throat> and you want people to... He's uh, he's like a some kind of guru to you, and you think that people should follow his lead. Yeah, I think I think he, he put me on to the whole podcast game, and, you know, he has... He did. A, huh? You hadn't heard of podcasts no, 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 before? No, no, no. no, no, no. I, I did his podcast, like couple i feel like eight months before i started mine um so other than i think doing campy's podcast his was like the one he had his own little office and uh i don't know i just thought it he did a good job he's really passionate what's about his it. podcast yeah you hear that bill i know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god like i i was okay, no no he he uh, told you all about podcasts. yeah Bill Cakes in radio, he's surrounded by audio professionals. And he goes, yeah, a friend of mine does his show but, in his garage, and it's the, awesome. The thing is, we're in this industry, so we do it all the time, and it, it's second nature to us. He is not necessarily in this industry. He, he He's not professionally anyways, but he does it out of passion. He just likes to do podcasts. Um, so he had the Maverick Monday podcast like um, years ago, but he doesn't do that one anymore. He has like a wrestling podcast. He talks. To, he interviews different guests. Um, is it called talking wrestling? <laughs> no, with two apostrophes. No, oh. he he has a couple different ones, but he, he I, I don't know. He just gives you tips and tricks on you know branding yourself and what companies should do to brand themselves. And um, well, listen, more information is not a bad thing. And so we, we people always have something they can share with somebody else. Yeah, we've kind of developed a, a friendship. But again, obviously, yes, I'm surrounded by media professionals all the time. Um, and I do my podcast as a way from for venting. He does his uh, venting. I do. I I I, think I got it, problems with all y'all, and I'm getting ready to tell you about them. No, I I, I consider airing of grievances. An audio journal. <laughs> like I called Bill last night, and th- that's what I'm saying. Sometimes I do get too loose on my podcast, and I have to remember that even though it is something I enjoy doing and it's fun. It still work, and it's going to be out there forever. And I called Bill last night in a reference. Well, not to if something. you delete it. No, people can download it. Will they? Yes. I, I mean, they can. I see who downloads my podcast. I, can I know, see what I, but people listen to it. They're not going to hang on to it. I'm saying if you delete it, it won't be there anymore for them to listen to. If you were, re- I'm saying if you were really worried about something, you would delete it. Well, he was worried, and he called me, and I said, "Uh-oh, you're good." <laughs> and I, I, I need to build a cosign because that way I was like, "Well, if, if they get rid of me, they had to get he rid of me." He was looking for somebody to blame. <laughs> I had Bill, to- you stepped right in it. He wanted a co-conspirator. <laughs> he didn't want somebody to give him their their stamp of approval. Not even his. He joke. wanted someone nah. else to go. Hey, did well, you know about this? Yeah, I knew about this. I needed someone to co-sign my cancel, and I just I didn't know where I heard it before. I also wouldn't worry about it. The, the company's clearly the company has a billion podcasts. They're clearly not listening to them. But that just shows they'll that throw I, anything up. I would not worry about it. That shows that I care. I, I'm, I don't. I understand. Just I'm just saying I wouldn't there. worry about it. Well, I, again, it, it, it's not like I I dwelled on it. I, it was just a point of reference. What, what was it in reference to again? <laughs> without without. Spoiling it. It was in the uh, Leonardo DiCaprio in The Revenant. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Was... We got raped by a bear? Yeah. See, okay, there you said it. He was worried about the bear rape? That's what I... That's like yeah. the one thing everybody talks about from that movie. Right. Again, I didn't know where I heard it, but again, comedians get, get like, canceled all the time for the stuff that they say. Not for that. Okay. Again, I just... Was caught... it a transgender bear? Because then you might be in some trouble. Also, tell, tell me the comedian that's been canceled. <laughs> I don't, I don't right. remember where I heard it from. Who said the whole beer rape or bear rape? Joke? Multiple people. Okay. That's what everybody. Like, yeah, like that's what meme. people were focused on yeah. in the Revenant was him fighting that bear, right. and it became I, and the thing and a bear yeah, rape. It wasn't. That's not what happened in the movie. In the movie, it, it wasn't, wasn't a rape. rape. I know. It was just in this like 
the zeitgeist that became that. I, I heard it so often that I was like, did he actually get raped by a bear? So <laughs> he did he's, he's not. That's how method he is. <laughs> so I, I had to go look. Well, I, <laughs> you had to make sure the bear was under 25. Uh, I, I had to go look at, at the scene. I was like, was it, was there a point in there where the bear got frisky with Leo DiCaprio? So I watched the entire scene. I was like, okay, so there's no rape. So it might be insensitive to... You know, survivor. So I was like, "What, was, what the that? hell was that? <laughs> that Who was, knows? Was it me? Oh, God. Mm. All right, it's the Shaggy defense. It wasn't me. Uh-huh. Uh huh. <laughs> messages you can leave them on the um, iHeartRadio app. By the way, a little talkback button there. Aye, 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 guys. What? Uh, don't any of you have any union people in your family? A scab is someone that crosses a picket line. The union workers are picketing because it's a non- Why are people repeating what I've already said? We all know what it's. I'm in a union. Is. I'm in SAG-AFTRA. Like, I'm not, it's not a union where you go out and picket. But, yes, I'm, people are leaving messages for things I already said. Yeah, I, I understand. What, I just, we didn't know what the rat was. And then when we right. found out rat was scabby, the rat, we're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Hmm. And I don't have any family at all anymore. <laughs> I have no. Thanks for bringing it up, man. My family has. Uh, They'll cross the picket line against yeah, me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we have a bureau chief, by the way. I, I heard from um, Steve, who's one of our bureau chiefs on the West Coast. He's out there in the Bay Area, specifically in Sonoma. And he was telling me about how they hit 109 there ye- uh, yesterday when it was 108 in Vegas. And I think he's the one that's like on a pot farm in the Bay Area or something, at the bottom of the mountains. And he's Stainless like, "Stainless steel or Teflon?" What? Copper. Oh, pot, pot farm. It's a pot. It's air conditioning a pot. isn't. Uh, <laughs> air conditioning isn't. <laughs> Willoughby. Hey, yes. hey, September seventeenth. Hey. Hey, all right. Bill dot com for tickets. There you go. We're both nerds. Ah, <laughs> uh, his apartment's been very, very warm. Um, but we have a single bureau chief. We have a girl named Carrie who listens in Cave Creek, Arizona. And I was ju- she didn't send me this, but it it sparked it in my head because I'm like, I know we have somebody out there. This guy died from heat exhaustion on a hike with his friends. I don't get these people who go out for a hike and, like, don't have gallons of water with them. Like, I know that's heavy, but then shorter hike. A young doctor and a new dad. This is a 32-year-old guy. uh, Died of heat exhaustion after getting lost on a hike in Arizona. Firefighters rescued six people uh, after they ran out of water. And they rushed this guy to the hospital, but he died. His wife has said she had told him not to go. He has a three-month-old daughter. And so now they have a GoFundMe. Um, Originally from Oregon, his second year of his residency. But you hear that this is not uncommon, by the way. These tourists or like a guy and his wife who are in their 60s, they go, let's go on a hike. You know, when you're even desert adjacent, if you're making a plan to go on just a Brief hike. Make sure that you've got water. Getting lost is a whole other thing. That's where the water comes in. I mean, there are places that you can, you know, if Cave Creek, places in Arizona, that you know, there are Listen, rocks and things that you can, you know, at least this, shade yourself from temporarily. If this guy's not going to listen to his wife, why would he listen to you? I mean, he can't listen to you now because he's dead. He's dead. But he died. Doing what he loved, which is having nobody going to tell him <laughs> how to live. Not one single person. Yeah. His wife tried to tell him. She wasn't even trying to tell him how to live. She's like, "Look, we no, have a not th- to hike. We have a three month old. You're a new doctor. You're out there. Gonna tell me how to live. You're at the neurological institute. You think a guy who was a resident at a neurological institute, Mary, would have used his brain." Hey, Willoughby. Nah, and I'm not September even in Willoughby. <laughs> you want to do a set? Come no. to a set. You can host. Willoughby? Actually, 
and Lorraine. <laughs> we got John Armstrong hosting with Levy, so oh, you got you can do a five. You you're, you're, you're in good shape. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this um, mm-hmm. uh, again, Cave Creek. Uh, I don't know. Just take a lot of water with you. Well, you can run out. This though. is this is like outside Phoenix. It's not in the middle of, you know, it's not in the middle of nowhere. It's still like the Phoenix metro area. If I were coming from another state, you know, if you're a local, you could see they might go, I can handle it. But if you're coming from somewhere else, you go, let's go on a hike in the desert. I don't know. Maybe it had nothing to do. I mean, they said the group ran out of water. He died of heat exhaustion. Maybe he just underestimated, you know, what he could handle or I don't know. Even if you have all the water, if it's going to be 109 degrees that day, that's an inside day. That is not a hiking day. No. <laughs> you right. don't go hiking on days where it's going to be 109. I don't care how dry the heat is. That's not a good idea. Well, and also, I mean, I, I am kind of talking out my ass, too, because I don't know. Everybody's different, and I don't, don't know. tell them. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think they already probably figured it out. <laughs> yeah. Here's my statement on the matter. Uh, who knows? <laughs> that, that, that could happen very, very quickly to you. I don't know. You know, we've all been on hikes. Well, I 109 assume, degrees is not great hiking weather. I'm not going anywhere, dude. If it's north of 80, and uh, the only thing I'm doing outside is going to a You beach. mean the turnpike or 80 degrees? North of I 80. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it runs across several states. So. Mary's like, I don't go north of the turn. You know what? You'll find me primarily south of the Mason Dixon line. Wink, wink. Mm-hmm. The south will rise again. Mm hmm. Yeah, anything over 80, 85 degrees, I'm not going outside. I'm not eating on a patio. I'm not doing any of that. Not even al fresco you won't do? I'm not al fresco in nothing. I like brief periods of being outside when it's super, super hot. No. It makes you feel alive. You get the toxins out. It's just like walking around in a sauna. People go for a schmitz all the time. I do yeah, not. But, that's, but it's different going outside for 10 to 15 minutes and being outside. a long-ass hike no. where you're going to... Die. Get heat exhaustion. I understand. Probably I, die. I understand. Just not hiking weather, man. Well, so you guys are always on my ass, Bill. Specifically, I thought you like being hot. I thought you. I like being <laughs> no, in the sun I, if I can be by water. I don't just like being outside and hot and exercising. I never questioned that. You've always been very clear on that. Who, who yells at me about that? You don't like that. Head? Your head. You don't. <laughs> you don't like that. Your that's, own brain. That's why I'm glad we made it to the new studios downtown here before the summer was over. Because I do have kind of an affinity for that, like hot city, smelly kind of walking around. You like, like urine. That means summertime. Well, it's in all of us. Yeah, but it doesn't some have to people, be out on the street. Some people but, let it out. <laughs> yes, and most people let it out. Seemingly in the stairway of our parking it's yeah. garage. Really bad. It's you got to pee so your pee. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very really urinary. Bad. Yeah. It's a very urinary garage. I didn't tell you I got a green sticker on my car, did I? On my <gasps> on my driver window. I thought you had a plaque. I do, but here's the thing. This I forgot I forgot it's all like about a this. Parking pass. It happened like a week and a half ago. And I go out what I had been doing instead of cuz all the iHeart spots are up on like the first floor. So you don't have to drive very far in the parking garage here. What I had been doing was going up and then coming back down and parking in that last stretch before the exit. Yeah. Because I thought that the plaque we had, because it's like the building management or whatever, I was under the impression that was kind of like an all-access thing, like it didn't matter where no, we parked. No, no, no. I didn't realize that. Anything with a little iHeart sticker on it. There's but I didn't see hearts. those. They're, they're like microscopic. They're not. On they're the- like three inches in diameter. <laughs> That's very small. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't realize that. It's on me. I didn't realize that they were they're very serious here about the parking. Anyway, so I go, but I had been doing this for like since we came down here. So yeah, nobody even weeks. noticed it until like two weeks. Well, you parked in the wrong guy's spot. But yeah. there's nobody down there is my point. So yeah, but anyway. They, somebody probably noticed it finally. I guess somebody finally woke up. Snitches. <laughs> well, whatever. If I'm not supposed to park there, I'm not supposed to park there. But, so, okay, but wait, I, wait, wait. I had to like gingerly, because if you go at those. And you rip, oh, oh, you're screwed. Oh, you're screwed. You need goo gone. Yeah. What is I, a green sticker? What does it do? They put a giant green sticker on your window. On your driver's <laughs> side window. <laughs> it's hard to get off. Yes, if you're not careful. And it's got Sharpie on it with the date. And they got the date wrong. Okay. They weren't even paying attention to the date. 
So if somebody else had gone, they would have towed my car because it had the day before's date on it. So I'm like, okay. So I Um, know, again, it's on me, but. I've I've seen the the iHeart placards that are by. Like there's the red up. I heart placards, and then there's like 20 reserved spots with numbers on them that have a small I heart symbol on them. Yes. Oh, I haven't seen those. So those yes. are for like guests and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I, which I don't know where, why we where, can't park there. Where Where are those at? Right before the red ones, right on the second floor. Right as soon as you round up after you come in. Oh, okay. I didn't even notice that those. whole first Cause, round. Because I usually just go like I'm going down and then park in that uh, like where there's I don't know just like general parking. Yeah. It's on the second floor. It's easy. Alan Mary no compl- green stickers. Mary complains about being cold all the time, but won't go outside when it's 80, which no. is objectively not that hot. I'll anymore. go out. I said anything north of like 85. Mm. 80, 85, I'm all right. I'll be outside. I'm not probably going to be very happy about it if we have activities to do. I don't like being sweaty. <laughs> Alan, I've hiked that trail that those people died on. Not much shade at all, so I'm not sure what they were thinking. I just can't even. I can't even imagine that. I got married in I got married in Valley of Fire State Park, this person says, near Vegas, wearing a black suit when it was 108 degrees out. Divorce your wife. They called 8% humidity. I would do that all day long rather than go through a summer in Ohio. Hmm. It's the humidity. It's been so humid. It is the humidity, but again, when you're in Vegas or you're in Phoenix and it's 116, and make no mistake— this is the new normal when they go, oh, it's the fourth day in a row. It's been 110 degrees in some of these cities. That's what it's going to be. It's not going to be like, we've got an awesome 72-degree day here in Phoenix. It's not going to be like that anymore. And there's no water, whatever. People keep moving out there because it's allegedly cheaper than other places. Yeah, because there's no water. <laughs> They're like, Gee, it's so cheap to get an apartment in Phoenix. It's why we moved. Yeah, because there's no water. That's why when I walk down here to get my sushi at Heinen's, mm-hmm. I will put it on the ledge here when it's a real hot day. Your sushi. Yeah. I'll put it out here on the ledge, and I'll come back in here, and I'll soak. do some more work. And then about, let's say, 90 minutes later, I'll go back out and get it, and I'll come in and and have it. How's your butt? <laughs> How's your butt, Mary? Is it leaky? No. Seems like you might have a leaky butt. I do not. (laughs) Sushy outside? No. Leaky. No. But nobody was going to cross my sushi picket line there. I put yellow caution tape around it. Said, hey, don't anybody touch this. This is a spicy California roll. Gross. Uh, I love sushi. Of course. Nobody does, especially after it's been outside. For 90 minutes. No, that's that's the way to sun. do it, in the hot, hot sun. Mm-hmm. We don't get direct sunlight in Incorrect. this window. We get indirect sunlight, but I got direct heat. Alan, I've been hiking for 35 years. I'm pretty much an expert. Real good with directions. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you laugh? This <laughs> person is an is. expert oh, in, well... Good. It's for you. But a couple years ago, I somehow got turned around in the woods with my wife and got really lost. My wife was freaking out. Oh, God, we finished the scary. we finished the resort, that show on Peacock, which, by the way, Chef recommends. Two thumbs up for this thing. But the last episode, they're crawling in these caves that get progressively smaller. <sighs> oh, and, there's, and there's a scene where, like, she gets stuck, and I'm like, oh, my God, I was palpitating watching this. Yeah. It's an actress. It's a set. Yeah. It's whatever. Doesn't matter. But that, Still and I'm not, scary. I'm not claustrophobic, per se. Mm-hmm. But I mean, those scenes where people get stuck in like a thing. Oh my god. It's terrifying. Oh my god. When my sister and I went out to the redwoods last October, we went on. We downloaded like the All Trails app, and it tells you like, okay, this this trail is 2.1 miles. It should take you about an hour and a half. Whatever it is, it gives you uh, how long it is, how long it normally takes people to hike yeah. it. So we picked one that was like a mile and a half. It was a medium course, so it was, wasn't was super easy, but it wasn't super difficult, and it was supposed to take us 45 minutes. Well, for whatever reason, we were stopping and taking pictures and all that, and we hit about the hour 15 mark, and we're like, okay, we should be coming to the end of it, but we were, we were in the thick of the Redwoods. 
So we're going, we're going, we're going. We hit like two hours. And my sister's like, yo, this was supposed to taste, take us like 45. Like, what is going on? And she has really bad anxiety. So she started freaking out. And you didn't have I a wasn't, compass with you or anything? No. Um, I mean, I had my phone, but w- with like the trail app up. But even that, you don't have any service. Well, that's what know? I mean, like an old school compass. But in, what is an old school compass going to do? You at least know you which know direction you need to go in. Well, and here was my other thing. We didn't get off of the trail at any point. We right. had stayed on the trail. So we didn't like wander off into the woods or anything. But we had accidentally like crossed over onto a second trail. So we did like three quarters of our oh, first trail. You got like the maximum trail. And then we were supposed to take like a right and then we took a left or something and we ended up on a second mile long trail. Those so now it's in the road, they'll get you. Well, we ended up doing like two of them and she is full blown panic attack, hyperventilating. We're going to die in the woods. Why would you bring it's me like out Blair here? Witch. I want to go home. <laughs> but it was like three in the afternoon. I was like, Lane, relax. We're going to figure it out. But there was a point when we're at like the two hour mark where I'm like, we are fully lost. Well, like there is, <laughs> you there is cool. because you didn't, I'm sure you didn't see anyone else we on the didn't trail. See anyone else. The trail was getting like progressively narrower. And I was like, oh damn, dude, I can't get us lost. But I was like, we have enough sacks to survive for like a day or two. Sacks? Like, like, snacks. Oh, God. No, I'm like- We have enough sex to survive a day or two, but it's just you and me and you're my sister, so that's not going to work out either. So Love. Let's got to- Let's is, make some friction. This is not the happy trail I was talking about. Please don't touch my vagina. We ended up coming to the clearing that met up with the, the other clearing. trail. Okay. Well, it met up with the at what was clearly the end of the other trail. They met up at one point. But it was like an hour further than where we were supposed to be, and she finally calmed down after like I had. It was took probably an hour and a half for her to calm down after we got back to the car. Just as a tease, I'm going to take a break here, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to find out if Mary got out of the woods and made it back to Cleveland. Oh, and if her sister died or not, <laughs> <laughs> and how much sex they had out there <laughs> while they were out there doing it. You brought it up. I mean, people are hiking these things. Just I have to assume. Just to say they did. I hiked Maybe. Death Valley. In 90 just to say. 100 degree weather. It's like people who put marathon stickers on their car. Like, I, you know. Which, by the way, you don't have to do it. You just buy one of those stickers. Yeah. Nobody knows. You can get them on Amazon. Right. That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> on Amazon. I got to take a break. Uh, if you want to text 35192, alancockshow.com for uh, all the other stuff, and we'll be back after these. <laughs> 